Hi guys, this is Jerry. And in this video, I'm gonna go through all the features, bells, whistles on the 2021 Volkswagen Passat Alltrack. So this particular tram is the only tram we offer in New Zealand. So Passat Alltrack, four wheel drive or all wheel drive, four motion as standard with two liter turbocharged petrol engine and in a wagon shape. So this is how the vehicle looks like on the outside. So let's start from the key. So key sides, uh, basically lock button from distance, unlock button by clicking that, and then that's for the boot release. Obviously press and hold, and the tailgate should open all the way, just like that. And if you obviously if you want to close the tailgate, either press and hold the key again, or simply tap this button on the side. So tap this button, close all the way, or there's another switch over here with the A light overall. I'm um, sure so as long as you have the key with you, simply tap this button, uh, it'll give you a small beeping sound. Then when you go away, um, the vehicle automatically locks its tailgate. Um, at the back, you find your triangle piece, simply unscrew this, take it off, you have the emergency kit. And then this is what the boot looks like. So on the side in Zoom versions, you have this sort of reflection vest and first aid kit as standard. This is how the boot floor looks like and some storage on the side. This is to drop the seats at the front, so basically pull this, the seats will go flat, and the same applies for this side, the seats go flat, 40-20-40 split. And on the top, you get your puzzle shelf, so all the way, that allows you to stay over here, push it down, push it down here, and press here again, it go, goes back. So press to go back, and pull it to go uh, forward. And then you also get this sort of pin that goes on top of the roof lining on the left and, and right. So that will give you a sort of barrier when you have your seats up for, for example, dogs or something like that. Um, yeah, and you get some hooks on each side for your shopping bag. You get hooks underneath for your uh, cargo cover sort of thing. And open that cover and we'll have a spare wheel. Um, plus jack and tools, all those things on the side. So yeah, this is how the vehicle looks like at the back. Cool, close that and then simply tap this button, it will lock. Another way to access to the vehicle is you have all the keyless entry and keys, um, keyless entry on the door. So basically finger over here, you can see the finger, so the finger prints press over there and then the vehicle will lock and hand in the handle, the vehicle will unlock itself. So that's how that works. Finger in, in there, locks itself. Uh, hand in the handle, and lock, unlocks itself. Uh, petrol tank, just basically open the cover as long as the vehicle is unlocked. Minimum is 95. Yeah. Close that cover. So walk to the passenger door, rear, uh, rear driving. So obviously this is how the seats looks like when it's dropped all the way down. And to push it up, it just goes all the way back. And to drop it on, at the front, you can pull this lever and it will simply drop the seats easily. You get SFX point if you have baby seats at the back. You also get air vents, so mi um, minus for the temperature, plus for the temperature or display over here. So this vehicle has the tri-zone temperature. You, this, the rear um, passenger can have different temperature against the front driver and the passenger. And air vents on and off whenever you like. And otherwise in the center of the console, you have a small armrest plus cup holders. It's pretty much at the back and walk to the driver door just open it up so on the driver door side uh, you get your central locking uh, lock unlock door handles and then this will be your windscreen well be wimmer switch so switch right go up and down left and right to switch your wimmer go left up and down left and right switch uh, your wimmers Otherwise, you can do heated remover. So when this arrow drops to the heated remover, it will heat up the remover basically in the winter morning. Otherwise, folding remover, just point to this direction, it will manually folding. Otherwise, when you lock the vehicle, it should fold in the remover as you set it up. Anyway, windows up and down, up and down the back, and window lock for the rear passenger. And that's another button for the key uh, door, sort of um, boot release and boot closing as well. So that's the electric buttons. And on this side, on the driver seat, so that's all your electric seats on the driver side. So just push forward, backward, up and down, 
for the base, you can adjust the angle by pulling this up or pulling this down. So the angle does change for the base. This is for the back, forward, and this is for the lumbar support, forward, up, down, backwards. And you do have heavy, uh, heating seats, so the, uh, sorry, you do have uh, memory settings. So once your seat position is set it up, as long as the vehicle is on or you actually want to switch it on, one press set, one press one, it, was, it will save at first position. That means when sometimes when someone change your seat or someone else drive, you, drive your vehicle, uh, when you want to change back to your seat settings, simply press and hold one, uh, your seat along with the rear mirror goes back to your position. And you do also have a, um, how do you say, the particular um, massage function at the back. Just simply press this button, it will give you a massage function. So this is the individual button for the massage. So yeah, that's pretty much everything about the seats. Now we'll jump inside to look at all the controls on the, in, the, in the vehicle. So first thing, go to the right console just below the air vent. And this is your light switch. So switch it off position, switch to auto position, switch to on position for the parking, switch on position for the night time. So you, you can leave it auto all the time. So the vehicle will switch on, switch off um, auto lights. That's the easiest way. And then you have focal lights controls. So this is front focal lights and rear focal lights. Can't remember which one. I, th I think this is front, this is rear. So simply tap the button and go through the focal lights. Obviously on your dashboard, it's always gonna give you a notification or lighting means if something is on or off for the fog lights. Otherwise, switch on, switch off, just leave on auto all the time. So that's the easiest way. And then jump to the steering. So to start the engine, obviously this is the, this is the push start. Uh, you have to hold your hold your, hold the brake. Um, but otherwise, um, because I would just demonstrate in the vehicle, I just tap the button. The vehicle electronic part switch it on uh, without engine switching on basically you do have engine light all those things on the dash doesn't mean the vehicle is, uh, is 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 having a problem it just basically i want to demonstrate the mode with just electric uh, sort of thing on so just mute the button make sure it's not on uh, so first thing we're gonna go through is basically these controls in the center control so handbrake that's um, obviously with this light on this is, uh, means the handbrake is on Another way to see it is you, you get the P light on the dashboard. That means your handbrake is on. So to release the handbrake, as long as you put your foot on the brake, press this button, release the handbrake, push, uh, sorry, pull to, to keep it on. So that's the handbrake. You get auto park, uh, auto hold as well. So how the auto hold works is when I start driving, when I have it, when the driver has its seatbelt on, I can press this button to engage this auto hold function. That means this particular orange will light up over here. Uh, when the auto hold is on, when I come to a complete stop, the vehicle will basically hold my handbrake. Uh, so the vehicle does not go forward, does not go backwards until I'm ready to go by pressing the throttle again. So that's how the auto hold works. If you like it, you can have it on all the time. If you don't like it, you can have it off. So that's up to you. Apart from that, at uh, the front, you get mode button. So that allows you to change to different mode. I'm just gonna click that. So press the mode button. You can see on now it's pop on the dashboard. It goes to normal, sport, individual, off-road, all that things. So shifting between basically. You can tap the button to do it quickly as well to skip the mode. Otherwise, simply press the keep pressing the button, it'll go through different modes. And at individual, you can see where we now we can change to different driving sort of profile so you can change your steering change your drive change your uh, uh, adaptive control all those things if you need to so that's how to change the individual ones otherwise press the mode button goes back to normal which is your sort of balanced mode so yeah that's to change the driving mode next one auto uh, auto switch on switch off which we call auto stop start so at, whenever you switch on the vehicle as standard your auto uh, stop start will be on and that means when, you, when the vehicle is in good condition, uh, when the battery is healthy, all that things, when the water temperature is normal, when you come to a complete stop, the vehicle will switch off the, uh, the engine. And when you release the brake, the vehicle will switch on the engine um, after you release the brake. If you don't like that feature, you can simply tap this button. You can see now the light light up on the dashboard. It says auto stop start system deactivated. That means that function is off now. So it will now switch on, switch off for you. After that, you get the parking sort of assist. So this is the parallel parking and or side parking assist for um, driving the vehicle uh, to help you to park in the parking space. And if you do need that, you, there's an individual video on online, you can check that. 
and then next one is your uh, parking assistance so you can press this button it brings up your cameras all the things on the on the vehicle Pre sorry press this button it will disable the camera so but if your vehicle is on reverse automatically that camera will switch on and when the vehicle approach to something at the front when there's a parking sensor obviously the parking sensor will automatically switch on but if you if you do want to individually switch on switch on off this is the button to just press and press so again you have indicator every now and then after that obviously we done with already done the push button start and let's have a look other things gear selector uh, so to push on into gears again, you always need to hold the brake So just put on reverse the vehicle will be on reverse with the reverse camera and all the um, round basically uh, Cameras so you can have different cameras on the side you can have different cameras at the back front all that things You can change your display everything and then one 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 back will be on neutral one back will be on reverse uh, Sorry one back will be on drive uh, when it's on drive obviously the vehicle is ready to go and then at the drive, you can switch back to change to S mode, which is a quick, sort of slightly quick shift and slightly more sportier response. So you just push it, pull it back, it's on S now. And pull it back, it's on drive again. So how to change that, you can see on the dashboard, I'll just pull it back to S, pull it back to drive. You don't need to do anything. And then all you need to do, if you want to go back to park again, just switch all the way to park. So that's how to shift it to S mode quickly. Otherwise, you can just rely on this mode button when you change in different modes. So then, and then at drive mode, you also can go left. And this is on menu, so the menu position, it's Tiptronic, so you can go up and down to change your gears up and down plus or minus another way to change gears while you're on manual shift is using the pedal shift behind the steering so you can see the left and the right so plus and minus that allows you to change your gears um, when you go into manual mode otherwise shift all the way to park that's how that works and we're on park and um, at any time on the dashboard it's always going to show park yep so we've done this center control for the driving part. I'm just going to go to the steering to give you all the uh, information for the steering controls. So in front of steering, you get two different segment, uh, two different buttons. So on the right hand side, these are the controls to change your display at the front um, center screen. So let's say you can go right. It goes to different menus for first the assistance, assistance systems. And go next one, that's navigation. Go next one, that's audio. Go next one, that's telephone. So you can choose your different systems. As I'm happy to stay here, either click OK or wait for a couple of seconds, it will pop out a notification. Then you can go left as well. So it goes in a loop, uh, goes around, around loop. Uh, for example, I'm gonna stay on driving data. So it shows the, my digital case and all the other information on the, on the, on the driving display. Then at any screen, I can also go up and down. So uh, let's say I'm going up. You can see it's uh, it show me warning or show me temperature, which the vehicle is not on at the moment, so it doesn't show anything. Consumption, you can show me average consumption, shows the range, shows all the things. You can go up and down anytime. And let's say if you go to another screen, like a, a system screen or navigation screen, you can go up and down as well. You can do different entries, all that things. So that up and down allows you to different uh, input in different screens, all that things. I guess most people will be quite happy with the driving data with digital case showing on the clock, which is I'm going to go back to speed. So that's how that works. And anytime you can click the view button, uh, it goes back to the music, goes back to the digital uh, digital case again. So the view button only does that, doesn't do much else. And then at the bottom, you get left and right for the track controls. So uh, you can change your different radio stations and track for uh, for your music player. Then you also get a voice recognition um, button. So on some cars, these are available, some cars are not. Uh, so on this particular vehicle, it is available. So you simply tap this button and the voice recognition will come out on the, on the screen. You can talk to the voice recognition, say, to guide you anywhere through the navigation on the screen, or you can talk to the navigation, you can talk to the voice guidance to, to give you indication of changing the radio or something like that. You can talk through. Uh, otherwise, if you don't need it, you don't need to press this button. And the center cap, obviously that's the horn, just push down and the horn will start. And then on the left hand side, that's all your assistance systems on the top black panels. On the bottom one, that's volume minus plus. Just allocating with this one, track control 
and volume control on the left. So I'll talk to the um, assistant systems first. So this particular vehicle has all the features of the sensor, everything at the front of, in front of you. So you have the normal, you have the cruise control or speed limiter. So at the moment on the dashboard, it shows both case at, at the bottom. So then that means the cruise control is not on. So if you want to have a cruise control on, press this button on the top right, click that. You can now see that changes. So I'm going to click, see that? And that changes so that changes the gray color that means the cruise control function is ready to engage if i start driving or if i'm driving on the road or i need to just press set button the vehicle will set a particular case at the bottom it'll show for example 80 or 50 or 100 whichever you're driving and then once it's set you can press plus or press minus to change your set speed uh, so let's say i set at 80k i'm gonna press plus it will go up by 10 so we'll round up to basically for example, 8 times 10 or 9 times 10. So it goes to 90, goes to 100, goes to 110, and then go minus, goes to 70, 60, 50. For example, that's to change your set speed. That means your vehicle will drive on your set speed if there's no traffic in front of you. And to do micro adjustments, you can click res resume or set. So resume goes up to 1 and set goes down by 1. Let's say I'm set at 80, I'm going to press resume. The vehicle goes Okay, 81 and keep going 82 83 this allows me to go to 79 78 77 so that's to do micro adjustments to change the case of the driving so the speed obviously your 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 cruise control speed is your sort of the target speed for the vehicle if the road is clear i will go on your set speed uh, but you have noticed that there is a button over here this is called adaptive cruise control so you can press this button over here you can see a pop-up on notification and disappear again so i'm gonna keep going keep going you can see the bars goes increase and then it would eventually decrease so it goes again goes in a loop you get one bar two bar three bar four bar distance so that allows you to choose your distance between you and the front traffic what that means is if your driving case is 30k and the vehicle basically in front of you is only driving 10k your vehicle will keep it in a safe distance to without you applying the brake or accelerator and eventually it will break uh, will slow down um, so accordingly and if the vehicle in front of you disappear change the lens or it goes up to to your certain case your vehicle will go up to your set speed again so that's how to change the distance between you and the front vehicle and then after that you'll notice another uh, small bar over here this is the new system on the on a lot of 2021 using the new vehicle this is called traffic assist so how that works is you press again there's no light that's from the initial it's from the start so press this button click set change your case then press the the bars to change your distance between the front vehicle then after that you can simply tap this button as well again at the moment it doesn't doesn't allow us to do that um, once you change to these particular settings, it's the traffic assist will be engaged. What that means is when your vehicle is driving and the vehicle uh, sensor will pick up the land markings, pick up the uh, speed, pick up the front traffic, all that things in front of you, and then uh, basically help you to keep in the right center of your land marking will steer all the way for you. Uh, no matter what speed you're driving so that's called the and then while you're doing adaptive cruise control obviously so and that's how the um, travel assist works on, on the 2021 models so that is really helpful when you can stop start traffic or you know long journey motorway or basically you take over this even take over the steering but you have to make sure your hand is on the steering this is just assistant systems it doesn't replace you as a driver so that's how the adaptive cruise control and the travel assist works and uh, in any situation if you do want to cancel the either travel assist or adaptive cruise control simply tap this button to cancel it while it's on or simply push the hold uh, press the press the brake and then it will cancel the cruise control um, so yeah that's how that works and to resume simply press resume and to go on normal cruise control if you do want to go back to the travel assist press resume press the travel assist again to go back there or press set it goes to your whatever you're, you're driving on you're slowing down to and yeah that's how that works another way um, this works in stop traf stop start traffic is when you come to a complete stop the vehicle obviously will come to a complete stop and then when your vehicle goes back to uh, when the front vehicle goes um, goes how do you say goes back into drive again you just simply tap the resume and the vehicle resume back to your cruise control or you simply tap the um, accelerator the vehicle resume back to your cruise control to start driving on cruise control again uh, but if you're on a 
uh, assistance system, which is the travel assist, and you don't need to do anything. The vehicle will eventually basically uh, accelerate and pick up the, how do you say, resume back to your cruise control again. So yeah, that's all about this. It's a very complicated, I know, um, but yeah, should be easy to get used to once you start using them. And other things, uh, other assistance systems, I'll show you that later. Uh, other things behind the steering. Uh, first one is called windscreen wiper. So basically, um, this is leveled. That means the windscreen wiper is off. And then you can see all the levers and gear change over here. So push down, it's just one wipe, one time wiper. And this time is off. Then we push up, it's on in, so the in, intelligent or whatever you call it, it's auto wiper basically and the wiper will wipe accordingly, depends on how much rainwater you're getting. Then you can use a switch for that left and right to change the sensitivity. You can see it's least and max sensitivity. Then go up again, it will be on low speed. So it's not rinsing anymore, it's just gonna wipe uh, as a speed, at a certain speed. Go up again, it's gonna be high speed. That's as high as it goes, otherwise drop it down. And you can also do the rear wipers. So you can see here at the moment it's off. So I, if I pull back, it will wash the front wiper. If I push forward, forward to, to the dashboard direction, it will be rear wiper on. Then I push it forward and hold, it will be the uh, wind, rear, sorry, rear wiper windscreen wash sort of thing. So yeah, that's how to operate the wipers. On the left hand side, that's your indicator. Go up and down. And flash is basically pull, pull it backwards to flash the flashlight. And you guys will go high beam just by push it forward you can see the high beam light on and pull it back and high beam is off so that's the indicator but again another one you need you notice there's a small bar over here with this particular light on a particular symbol on the side that's all your system systems so if i tap this button your my system systems will come on, on the dashboard so i can control that by going up and down so the first one as you can see i'm just zooming it's land assist so land assist how that works is if that tick is on that means the land assist is on and that what that means is um, no matter if the travel assist is on or the, the uh, cruise control is on or not uh, when the vehicle goes over 60 k's and then the sensor basically sensor in front of you you, you will pick up the land marking uh, when you drive and then try to balance in the in the sensor before you uh, departure either to the to the curb or to, um, to the oncoming traffic sort of thing uh, so that's called the land assist uh, and then i tap the button again i go to next which is the adaptive cruise control so that's how this cruise control is on um, but if i don't want the adaptive cruise control i want to drive myself but i want to set the speed limiter you can also go speed limiter simply use these up and down arrows and click ok to select for example i'm on speed limiter you can see these bar changes as well at the bottom um, what that means is I can I can set the speed limiter to for example I can set then I can press and plus minus and then it will set a speed limiter sort of thing to certain case basically if I set a speed limiter I can press set uh, or plus or minus you can see now it's it's trying to set a speed limiter at 40 but it's gray at the moment I will need to press set before uh, when I start driving it will change to green light that means I'm on speed limit so I'm still driving at the moment um, but the vehicle does not allow me to go over 40 k's anymore so thing otherwise press this to cancel that and then let's click the button again because this menu will disappear after some seconds we'll just go down to see side assist side assist is your blind spot detection uh, so basically when you drive along the road and there's someone traveling behind you this light bar will light up on the rear mirror either on the right or on the left inside so you can see that rear traffic alert this particular one is when there's a when you reverse out the car park you can't see anything coming from left and right then but if the vehicle is actually coming from left and right then it will give you a beeping sound it will give you flashlight on the on the rear mirror as well so that's the tra rear traffic alert again these features if you don't like it you can always just simply tap the button on the wiper um, the indicator and then untick it for example i don't want line assist anymore i just click ok and untick that that's the easiest way to take it off and click that it will be on so if it's ticked it means that function is on Next, last one is the front assist. So that's pretty much pre-collision warning and emergency braking. In case you are likely to crash into something or someone, the vehicle will give you alert at the, and the at the last second, give you emergency braking if necessary. So again, if you don't like it, you can untick it, but most people will have it on. So yeah, that's about the this particular small switch on the side for the adaptive for the assistance systems. Yeah.
Cool, now we're gonna jump in the center screen menu to see all these things. I'll, I'll just talk about the air conditioning first because this is the easiest one. So you on the top left and top right, you get your um, heated seats function. So I can just tap the button. Yep, you can see the heated seats. You get three bar, two bar, one bar. That's basically heating level. Again, that applies to the same to the left one. And then after that, you get front windscreen um, front windscreen plus just max and rear demister just press that by tapping that you can also get directions so you can tap this button you can change the directions it will pop up a notification on the dashboard before it disappear again at some point but you can see the, how that changes or you can just click directly click that to change your directions for the uh, aircon and then sync which is basically connects your temperature at the front also the temperature at the back for the rear passenger I'm just gonna put it, the vehicle on neutral so we can see the Gear lever, um, and then you can change your fan speed. Uh, sorry, uh, the sync. So you can change to. You can see everything's follow the driver temperature, swiping left and right. But if the sync light is off, or if I do touch this um, switch on the side, that means you get two different temperatures. So they're not the same anymore. So the driver can have one temperature, the passenger can have another temperature. But if I tap this button again, both will connect it together again. Recirculation and non recirculation. That's very easy. AC on and off, that's very easy as well. Auto switch on, switch off as well, that's easy. And fan speed, just up and down. You can either tap this to all the way down to all the way up, or you can swap left and right, or just click in between. So that's very handy. Obviously, again, the light bar will light up. It's very hard to, to pick up in the, in the camera, but in real life, you'll be noticed that. Temperature, that's the same thing as well. You can either tap it to go up and down, or swap it up and down, so very simple and menu and off off just switch off completely and off back on will go to back to the what where you switch it off and menu that allows you to see the menu on the top here so let's say you have passengers at the back but you don't want them to control the rear passenger or anything you can lock it up by the way otherwise you can see how the temperature goes in different directions you can see the temperature is synced that means everyone is getting 22 degree everyone is getting the same fan speed everyone is getting uh, everything from top to bottom to 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 even the front windscreen uh, so you can see the rear as well so that's all simple um, but if you want to lock up the rear you can press the lock up the rear so the rear passenger won't be able to select the temperature anymore uh, you also have air care so in in a bad day or something like that and the, the air pressure and the air quality is not so good you can activate that so i have a sort of a, a little bit powerful uh, filter that allows you to do access but otherwise you don't need to use it New Zealand is pretty good i suppose so yeah, that's about the temperature um, controls on the, on the, um, at the bottom. And the next one, we'll go through the everything menus in the center display. There's a lot to talk through. So um, it's easier to go through this menu display from the first to all the way to the bottom. So simply click menu button. You can see this allows you to see all the different menus that's uh, available. Uh, you'll notice this small wave hand gesture over here. That means the vehicle can you can wave in the other screen without touching it to go to left and right. As long as you see this, that means certain menus are available for wave gesture control. Otherwise, probably touch is much easier, so it's much more uh, sens sensitive um, to control. Just, um, the first one is radio. So this is the radio station we are playing at the moment. I'll be showing, showing the name. And then you can see the pre, so the preloaded radio stations. You can just click this button to change different radio stations. In case you want to save your different stations in the first page, let's say, uh, we're gonna click station list. Or we're gonna go to more FM, for example. Uh, I want to save more FM at the first one. Just click and hold. You can see the more FM save that first one. So that's how the, to control everything. Obviously, in different areas, you have different station lists, all the things. So feel free to change by yourself. And then you can click source, so let's change to FM, AM, Bluetooth audio, whenever you like. So yeah, that's about that. In the setting menu, you can change the sound, you can change the arrow button. Oh, sorry, arrow button here, station list. That means the arrow button on the steering wheel. So when you press the steering arrow buttons, it changes to between station list. But you can change to preset list as well. Uh, so that's up to you, whenever you choose, default setting is station list. Um, you can have um, you can have advanced settings all that things but not, not too important so yeah that's about the individual settings next one we'll go to the telephone so we can connect your smartphone basically by searching the 
uh, Volkswagen uh, telephone here. So I've got an iPhone here with me. Um, I can unlock this. Just give me one second. So I've kind of unlocked this. Um, what I can do is I can just simply go to my Bluetooth search this particular name. So I'll just go to settings and just go to this one. Sorry, not the Wi-Fi, not the one we want. I'll go to Bluetooth. Uh, you can see it's now searching. It's just going to search devices. And you can see the mobile phone, not this one, and my Vida. You can see it pops up. Just click that. You can see it's asking do you want pair. I'll just click pair for this time. I'll delete the other once we finish and I'll ask you do you want to allow your contacts we just click allow That's totally fine now you can see it's connected and it will also ask you do you want to use Apple CarPlay so the reason of this is this vehicle has wireless Apple CarPlay you know a lot of old cars or previous generation you only have the normal Apple CarPlay with the cable charge so I'm gonna click use Apple CarPlay so we'll just click Apple CarPlay instead so what that means is um, I don't need to connect with my smartphone uh, and then I just I can click uh, I can see my maps all that things on this particular screen as long as everything is connected so it's just connecting now you can see it's pop up so this is how the Apple CarPlay screen looks like without me charging um, charging the, the phone at all uh, so how that works is um, I simply tap this button. You can see this um, on this. Uh, you can see the menus, all the things. Uh, my phone is not connected to network, so I don't have phone or messages network or anything. It doesn't show the map either. But when you have your map, uh, when you have your everything map available, you can just click map. You can it will display a map screen, all that things. Um, and you can ask a Siri while you're driving as well. Simply click and hold. You can see Siri pops Siri up again. My my phone is not connected to the internet, so it doesn't it doesn't allow me to access to Siri. But otherwise, it will it will be able to have access to Siri. All that functions whenever it's connected. So that's how the Apple CarPlay looks like, and you can have your access to your Spotify, your messages, all that things. Simple, and um, yeah. So that's about the Apple CarPlay. Again, if you don't want to connect your Apple CarPlay, you can also connect via Bluetooth. That means you don't show your map, you don't show everything, but you can still make phone calls. So you can click Bluetooth, and then it should change over to just hands-free phone. Uh, so it doesn't really show my map, it doesn't really show my messages or anything, but I can make phone calls and can listen to music from my phone. Now you can see my phone is connected, and uh, it's over here, but again, no signal because no SIM card or anything is on that phone. And uh, you can change your settings, you can change your select mobile, all that things over here. You can even see your contact history, you can see your call history, all that things when your phone is connected. Yeah. So yeah, that's about the Apple CarPlay. And if you do want to listen to any music while your phone is connected, simply go to media and click source and click Bluetooth audio. Again, my, my phone has nothing on it, so it doesn't really play anything click menu and uh, next one we'll go through the navigation button so click navigation uh, you can see that pops up uh, we don't need to do that we just click this small icon this is how the navigation looks like screen uh, so this is in the sort of nighttime mode because we're in the showroom uh, but in daytime it should have a white background uh, so this is where we are basically uh, if you do want to search anything simply click the search button and type your address type any other things you want to search you can search to petrol station just click by clicking that parking spot by clicking that so that's all very simple another way to search uh, you can see your last destinations if you have searched something you can see everything over here we'll click that that's some data about other other locations uh, when you collect it we press the heart icon and that's all your saved stations basically so click that goes back to uh, center screen or we'll click that sorry click search it goes back to the search engine basically and um, if you do want to save anything uh, in anything just type type them in and save them in the um, save the station and small icon over here you can see the uh, volume for your volume. navigation announcement you can change your day you can change your night when the light is on or you can change the auto so it's switch on switch off based on your lighting controls so yeah that's how the navigation looks like change the graphic as well go up north 2d and up no uh, sorry up in the vehicle direction 2d and 3d for the vehicle direction so that's how to change the display yeah that's very simple click menu again uh, you get your assistant systems so this is the same thing when we touch this button but quick access to, through this button 
but you do have a little bit more to read in this so you can have change your adaptive cruise control you can change all your detailed things adaptive cruise control you can change your distance you can change all the things when you when you open up anything let's say your side assist you can change the brightness on the side assist by the way and you can read the information how that works what it does basically if you want to read a little bit more otherwise untick and tick that means this functions on and this functions off so i'll leave that to you to choose whichever you like and uh, so yeah menu after that app connect that's basically your iphone and android auto again for some phones that you don't have wireless charging or wireless apple carplay you do need to click uh, how do you say connect the cable through this particular usb-c cable uh, which is on all the new volkswagen then your phone will be able to set it up through the apple carplay otherwise you have if you have uh, iphone for example x or iphone 8 onwards you will be able to connect it with wireless uh, apple carplay you need to make sure your Siri is enabled, by the way, and you make sure you have your data access to those things. So that's the Apple CarPlay. And for Android, same cable, just go through there and connect the cable, set it up, all the things. And then next month, next time, you will be able to connect it either wirelessly or through a cable again. So that, that's about the settings. Click menu and you get vehicles. So a lot of talk about in the vehicle settings. So this display basically display your fuel consumption all the things you can change to the left change to the right um yeah so different different vehicles and then you can change to different driving for example vehicle statues you can see it's all it's all good at the moment but if your tire pressure is wrong or you need a service or anything like that it will pop up a notification by the way and you can change your off-road because this is the full drive you can change your off-road settings you can change the different display um all the other things if you like to different vehicles and then in the settings that's the major thing we need to talk about uh, so first thing is called esc systems so that's a stability control system at the moment it's activated that's all good but if let's say you go off road you need to turn the traction control off you can disable it by just turn, turn this off and next one is your tires so you can and the vehicle has the tire pressure loss indicator that means if one of your tire pressure is too low or you have a punctual rip, a punctual tire it will give you a warning on the dashboard um, but if you if you have replaced your tire or you have changed all that things um, you do need to reset just by press the set button and change the reset otherwise it should be all good next one is lighting control uh, so you can change all of these small things of uh, for example auto lighting rain medium switch on time all that things that's up to you you can change you can this you can uh, change this disable it uh, whenever you like parking and maneuvering uh, so you can activate the parking uh, distance control so parking distance control is basically your parking sensors it can be activated automatically when you get close to something at the front or rear you can change your volume up front and rear all that things if you think the parking sensor uh, parking sensor warning volume is too high maneuver braking so this is active at the moment what that means is if you reverse um, too fast you're likely crashing something or someone at the back you can yeah, the vehicle will give you emergency braking if necessary again if you if you don't need it or don't like it you can untick this but it is on default setting rear traffic cross alert we've already talked about when we press this button so that's your warning when you reverse uh, out of the car park next one mirrors and wipers so um obviously this is all ticked so it will lower in reverse gear or folding and locking uh, wipe automatic ring sort of thing you have green wipers so again this is all ticked if you don't like any of them just untick them next one opening closing uh, so first one is probably important window operation so that you get convenience opening on this vehicle by the moment it's switched off so that means it doesn't do anything uh, next minute we can switch it on uh, so that's switch to all windows so how that works is i'll take the key out if in the whole summer um, i want to switch switch uh, let my all my windows drop before i jump in the vehicle just let the vehicle cool down or i just press and hold the unlock button all the way until all the windows drop down and then next minute i find that it's okay i don't need to drive the car anymore just press and hold on the lock button or the windows will go back up so that's how to operate the convenience opening if you don't need all windows you can also do driver windows so it does help otherwise switch it off is the default setting and next one central locking uh, so your central locking basically when the vehicle unlocks either you click the click the button or unlock from the door it only unlocks that center single door but most most time i personally like all doors because i don't need to go through on it and or touch the buttons or the things 
but it's up to you if your choice is just vehicle side or single door or all doors. And lock automatic driving, again, this is something I prefer when the vehicle drives off, and the door automatically lo uh, locks, so it's just nice and easy, safe safe on the road. But if you don't, if you if you need it, just take that. Easy open is basically your electric tailgate. So if you don't want the electric tailgate, you can take this off, so you can manually lift the tailgate up. But again, most people will prefer to auto tailgate. Uh, open luggage cover, yeah, so that's the same thing, auto tailgate as well. Uh, interior monitoring, uh, so this is on, that means you, in case you, you lock the vehicle but you left a small animal or, or a baby inside the vehicle, there's a, there's a motion detector um, and it'll give you an alarm when something's detected. So that's the interior monitoring. And next one, that's your seats. So you can change all the seating position, you can change the vehicle key activated as well. You can change the driver entry, convenience entry uh, function, that means if you, I take this, when I exit the vehicle, the seat goes a little bit backwards. Uh, when I jump in the vehicle, the seat goes backwards again to give me the entry position. Uh, so that's the vehicle uh, settings for the seats. Instrument cluster, you can change your cluster information. You can take this and take that. And time and date, you can you can change your time and date. You can do menu, you can do GPS, you can do summer time, all that things as well. And next one, units. You can change your units, but this is the New Zealand units. The only thing I would probably change is probably bars, depending on where you go. You can PSI, you get here and there. Otherwise, service. Service interval is 15,000 15, Ks or one year, whichever comes first. So yeah, that's pretty much all the settings about the car settings. So in case you want to quickly anything, click menu, click vehicles, or click car directly and go to the settings. So that's all your settings you want to personalize when you have the vehicle initially set up. After that, sound system. Uh, you can change all your sound system, go left and right to, to those equalizers. And positions, you can change your position front, forward and backwards. Volume, you can change all your volume uh, with these ones as well. So yeah, and other settings about this and that, you, you can change that by yourself. I'm pretty sure you'll be all right. And let's go next. Aircon is basically the menu button along with this. We've already done that. And settings, that's for the screen setting that. So you can change the screen by screen, touch screen tone or anything like that. Time and date, we've already done that. Language is English at the moment. And other things, Wi-Fi, they probably don't really offer any Wi-Fi in the user market, although it's available. Uh, manage mobile devices. You can change your mobile devices. I'm just gonna delete my one. So the next one will be fun. And other things, restore factory setting. You don't need to restore until you sell the car sort of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much everything about the in the menu setting uh, for the vehicle functions. And you can have direct buttons again, radio, media, uh, volume, up and down, switch on, switch off for the media, phone menu, voice command, navigation, app, car. So that's all there basically. Uh, in case you need to read anything or um, do anything, just um, yeah, just let me know. Or read through the owner's menu, that should be easy. Uh, so yeah, that's all the functions about this center screen. Uh, again, charging vehicle or connecting the vehicle, you can you get this USB-C um, <coughs> holder, or you get a 12 volt socket over here, and you get another USB-C in the center console. So that's to charge or connecting your devices, basically. In the car box, you get all your own menu, everything in there. If you do want to read something specific, on the top, that's a hazard light and um, wipe, uh, sorry, aircon, air airings opening and closing. And up there, you get your sunglasses holder, open and close, just push it in, and you get your lighting controls, all that things as well. So the first one is the rear lighting, sorry, the video. Uh, rear lighting, you can switch on, switch off, the reading light on the driver's side, reading light on the passenger side, or the door light. When the door light is pushed in, that means when you open the door, the vehicle lights light up. When push back in, when you open the door, it doesn't light up. So that's up to you if you want to choose that. I think that pretty much covers all the things. That's the last bit. And hopefully it's an easy explanation for all the things. But if you do have any questions, just please comment below or please contact me directly. I'll be able to help you through anything. And thank you very much. Enjoy.